Hi, everybody. I want to welcome you to our first visioning workshop for the Sulphur Creek Nature Center Master Plan. We're delighted that you could join us tonight, and we thank you very much for taking some time out of your evening to help us brainstorm about some exciting things that could be happening at Sulphur Creek Nature Center. Oh, hold on. I have to. There we go. Uh, some of you might be very familiar with Zoom, and for some of you, it might be your first meeting in Zoom. I also wanted to point out a few uh, features that you probably haven't seen. Uh, we do have Spanish interpretation available for tonight. And uh, on your screen, if you find the menu that has your mute button, uh, you should also see an interpretation button that looks like this. If you click on that button, you'll have the option of hearing tonight's presentation in Spanish. Um, this, record, this meeting tonight will also be recorded and uh, the Spanish translation will be captured as part of that recording for community members who couldn't be here tonight uh, and who might wanna take advantage of that feature. Buenas noches. Quería comentarles que la reunión de esta noche tiene servicios de interpretación en español. Para poder acceder a los servicios de interpretación, ustedes pueden mirar la parte de abajo de su pantalla en Zoom, hacer clic en el icono del globo terráqueo y eso les va a dar la opción de escoger el idioma español o Spanish. La reunión también se va a estar grabando, incluyendo la interpretación en español, por si hay otros miembros de la comunidad que son hispanoparlantes que no pueden asistir a la reunión de hoy. Gracias. Great. Thank you. Uh, a few other meeting controls that you might want to find on your screen while we're getting started here. We will be uh, collecting your questions and comments in the chat window. And um, just take a minute and find the little uh, cartoon bubble that says chat and make sure your chat window is open. Um, we're going to be giving you a presentation. And then at the end of the presentation, we're going to answer as many of your questions as we can. So go ahead and just throw them up there in the chat um, and we'll be keeping track of those. Um, if you have a specific question that you want to address to the project manager, you can uh, address that to, uh, instead of everyone, choose project questions in the drop down menu. And those will go right to Hai Ping, who is HARD's project manager for this project. Um. Si usted tiene alguna pregunta o comentario y quiere escribirla en español, puede hacerlo con toda tranquilidad en la función de chat de Zoom y los intérpretes la traducirán al inglés para el panel. Gracias. Great. Uh, if you are joining us with a smartphone or a tablet, these controls might look a little different on your screen. So um, you may find that they look like this instead. Los controles se miran un poquito diferentes cuando usted accede a Zoom desde el teléfono. Aquí tiene una imagen de cómo se ven. Great. Um, so that's sort of our quick orientation to the Zoom room that we're meeting in tonight. Um, and again, if you have any questions, you can send them to us in the chat window you need tech support, uh, my colleague Spence is going to be running this meeting from behind the scenes, and you can address a question to him in the chat window as well. Oh, go ahead. Um, I'm going to just take a quick moment uh, and introduce myself, and then I'm going to hand this over to Hai Ping. Uh, my name is Sarah Gronquist, and I am uh, the team leader for PlaceWorks, the planning and design group. And you'll see me again a little bit later on in the presentation. But um, I'm going to give it to Haiping right now uh, to do the next part of the presentation. Hi, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining the Silver Creek Nature Center Master Plan Visioning Workshop. Your participation is crucial for the future of this special place where injured wildlife is rescued and rehabilitated. 
and visitors of all ages come to connect with animals and the world beyond. My name is Hai Ping Mo, the project manager at heart for Silver Creek Nature Center master planning and outreach process. I'm glad to be joined by the amazing project team from HART, including our recreation supervisor, Debbie Hernandez, Silver Creek Nature Center coordinator, Wendy Wisdett, recreation program leader, Deb Lawner, senior bond project manager, Marvin E, and bond project manager, Darcy De La Mut, as well as our uh, design consultant from PlaceWorks, uh, including Sarah Grankus, E.S.P. Fletchman, Spence Kohler, and our grand writer from Hatchel Tabernick and Associate, Adar Schneider. Next slide. Our agenda today will start with a presentation to bring us all back to Sulphur Creek Nature Center, a special place loved by many community members. We will also learn information about the project and the site. After the presentation, we will break out into small group to share our thoughts, vision, and listen to each other. We will then rejoin with everyone around seven o'clock and hear key discussions from each small group. Our meeting will end around 7.30 uh, next. Deb, take it away. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's Paul. <laughs> We are going to ask you uh, an icebreaker question um, and find out what your relationship to Sulphur Creek Nature Center is, whether you have been to Sulphur Creek Nature Center or you're interested in learning more about the Nature Center. So um, in a moment, some questions are gonna pop up on your screen and just click on the answer or fill in the box, um, whatever response you want. And then we'll collect the answers in a few minutes and talk about them. It's really fun to see the answers trickle in. Thank you so much for participating. Just another few minutes here. Great. It looks, oh, no, a few more trickle in. <laughs> there are three people who haven't voted yet, and I know one of them just joined the meeting, so they might not be ready, but um, let's just do two or three more seconds, and then we'll close the poll and look at the results. Okay. Uh, so here's what we found out. Uh, it looks like there are a lot of you here who volunteer at Sulphur Creek Nature Center, and that's, that's fantastic. We're so happy to have your insight and your experience in our visioning meeting tonight. Uh, and some 25% uh, of the people here tonight visit often. 22% uh, have visited at least once, which is great. And then a few people who are interested who maybe haven't been to Sulphur Creek before. So that is very useful information. At this point, uh, I'm gonna turn the next part of the presentation over to the Sulphur Creek uh, Nature Center staff. Uh, go ahead. Great. Hello, everybody. I just wanna introduce myself. My name is Deb Barner and I'm a program leader at Sulphur Creek. Go ahead and move to the next slide, please. I wanna show you a little video, just a moment here. Let that get going. Thank you. All right, so some of you probably already know this, but Sulphur Creek Nature Center is a 10 acre park that's nestled between uh, houses in the Hayward Hills. Just wanna let you know our official mission is to instill a sense of responsibility for the welfare of our world by bringing people and animals closer together through wildlife rehabilitation and education. Um, so I don't know if it's a little glitchy on yours, it's okay on mine, but walking into Sulphur Creek it is just um, like walking into a hidden oasis. I, I don't know about you, but I, it just, you come across those bridges and surrounding yourself in nature, it just provides a calming experience for visitors, for volunteers, for staff, 
and everything. Um, our first aviary here is one of our residents, our long-term resident, Golden Eagle, here is Solomon. Now here we house a non-releasable wildlife at Sulphur Creek. And Solomon here, he was actually banded in the nest in 1999 by biologists. And in 2000, he was struck by a windmill, which actually severed his left wing tip. So he can't fly anymore. So he will be with us for the rest of his years. All right, we can move to the next slide. So I wanna tell you a little bit about our park amenities. So some of the things that you can expect here if you haven't been here. So that includes aviaries and animal enclosures for our resident wildlife. Next slide. We also have a native plant garden and a little aviary for our special, one of our special friends there uh, in front of our discovery center. Next slide. Now inside our discovery center, we have a variety of animals on display, including reptiles, amphibians, and arthropods. Now beyond the Discovery Center is our outdoor area, as the amphitheater, we have presentations there and it leads to additional enclosures, our lawn and picnic sites and access to our hillside trails. Next slide. Not too far from there is our resident coyote and fox enclosures and here you can see some of our resident coyotes, Jazz and Sage. Now we do name them all but they are not pet animals just, just as a reminder. In addition, we have our hillside trail access as well as access to the creek and we do explore the creek with groups in, at certain times. Next slide. So in addition to being a beautiful place, a beautiful park where people can visit and see these animals, we also do a lot of education programs. And this is one of the images from our programs. Uh, we provide enriching experiences for participants of all ages. I like to say in my programs that we reach children age zero to 100 because when you come to Sulphur Creek, it brings out your inner kid, your inner child. <laughs> Next slide. So we reach groups including schools, scouts, adults, seniors, developmentally disabled groups, toddlers, preschoolers, private birthday parties. We reach as many people as we can. <laughs> uh, and lately we've been doing virtual field trips. In the summertime, we offer summer camps and we are doing summer camps this year, woohoo. Um, we're excited to, to come do our summer camps and we have volunteer opportunities for local teams as well. So you can see a team chasing a camper in this picture. <laughs> I love this picture. Um, so we have teams that volunteer to help as well as camp opportunities for local youth. Next slide, please. So I just love this picture. I'm sorry, I'm distracted by it every time I see it. Uh, so we do have resident animals on site, as we've been saying. Uh, so just to give you a basic idea, we have birds including owls, hawks, crows, eagles, an eagle, falcons, a vulture, doves, chickens, ducks. Um, next slide. We also have mammals, including our coyotes. Um, you know, I forgot to put the credit to Raul Alvarez for this photo, this lovely photo. Um, at foxes, we also have rabbits, bats, chinchillas, hamsters, skunk, opossum. I had the skunk out for a senior group out today. It was fun. Okay, next slide. <laughs> so some of the other little guys we have, uh, we have our reptiles like our box turtles in this photo. Gotta love this photo. Uh, we have a tortoise, snakes, lizards. We also have amphibians, including frogs, a toad, and a newt, and uh, some arthropods, including a tarantula, beetles, cockroaches, and walking sticks. Next slide. So on top of all of this, we also have about 180 active volunteers. This is just one of our amazing volunteers. This photo is taken by Oliver Klink. Um, and the, our volunteers help us with everything. It's an amazing, amazing community program and community service too, also through our volunteer program. Our volunteers help us with our education as well as our rehabilitation efforts. And last slide, please. I just wanted to show a little video here. This shows staff member Samantha Connor releasing a peregrine falcon at the Martin Luther King Jr. Regional Shoreline in Oakland. So 
So our wildlife hospital rehabilitates 600 to 700 wild, wild animals a year with lots of them being able to be released. Now the education department itself, it performs over 1000 educational programs a year in normal years, <laughs> pre-pandemic. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we estimated reaching approximately 30,000 people through various efforts. Now we are excited to bring these ideas to you in the community and we can't wait to hear your input. So I just wanna thank you for your time and I'll hand it back over to you. So thank you everyone. Thank you. I'm going to um, take a moment here to give you a little bit of information on the background and context for why this plan is being prepared. Um, as Deb, my name is Isby Fleischman, and I am also um, with PlaceWorks. And Deb gave a pretty exciting presentation. I'm pretty sure we're all smiling at this point, and you may be wondering why would a master plan be needed. Um, so my job right now is to just give you a little bit of information on why that plan, why the plan is being prepared, a little bit about the planning process itself. And really what I wanna emphasize is how important it is, your participation is and make sure you know how to continue to participate. Um, so now, actually, could you stay on that slide, Sarah? Not only is um, Silver Creek a really special place in and of itself, but it's also really unique within the whole region. Having a facility that has wildlife rehabilitation and live exhibits, as well as pub free public programming and public programming at all, is, um, is really special. You can see on this map here, there are some other comparable programs, not all of them offer free programming like this or have the same resources. So it's um, definitely a really important place drawing people not just from the immediate area, but from across the Bay Area with, I think Deb may have mentioned this, but 40,000 people annually either participate in programs or visit the site. And it's really an important place um, for the whole area. Go ahead and change the slide. So as far as why this, what this, this master plan is happening um, is, is really to um, identif help identify the ways that Silver Creek can be better served, both better serve people now and in the future. Um, it's really wonderful that both staff, volunteers and visitors are aware that there's opportunities to make sure that it is better serving people. Um, so the development of the master plan is a chance to develop a really community driven vision and specifically, we are looking to identify needs and priorities for improvements and for the future. And within that, looking at improving access and user experiences. And lastly, the master plan is really important for setting the stage for fundraising efforts, including a Proposition 68 grant. Um, master plans in general are a great way to document exciting ideas and priorities and show that community support. And that really does set programs and projects up well for grant funding. Go to the next slide. Um, there are a couple key funding sources and opportunities um, that are, have already been identified. Um, the process right now, the planning project, right, the planning process right now and the outreach and the design and the grant writing that are going into it were funded by a measure F1 bond. It's $0.2 million, so that's already secured money. Um, and, sorry. Um, and Silver Creek Nature Center was also awarded a $0.5 million outdoor education, uh, sorry, outdoor environmental education facilities grant in 2018. That's from California State Parks as well. Um, for that grant, we worked with HARD's recreation and capital team and helped put together a plan. And so the awarded funds haven't been used yet, but they need to be applied only towards the improvements that were specified in this grant application. And that includes outdoor classroom, amphitheater renovation, the Creekside Animal Improvement Area, or sorry, improvements to the Creekside Animal Program Area, um, an entry kiosk, and um, wayfinding signage. And then what you see in light green at the top is the prop, the potential. This is just a potential for the Proposition 68 Regional Park Program Grant. Um, this is a, um, this grant, grant program will give up to $23 million total combined with different grants and with individual awards are up to $3 million. So if, um, if Silver Creek Nature Center is awarded this grant, it would really be a significant help towards implementing some of the improvements that we'll be identifying and talking about tonight. Go to the next slide. Um, and I, 
to, in order to be competitive for this grant, and it is a competitive grant, many, not everyone will, will receive the award. Um, there's a couple things that we need to do. The first is to make sure that the, the grant application identifies a new recreation feature, um, and in particular, multi-use trail is an important aspect of this, of this grant. Um, we also want to make sure we are encouraging broad public, particip broad public participation, which is why we're really thankful that you're here tonight. And we hope that you'll tell your friends and um, contacts to participate in the survey and the upcoming activities as well. Um, and it's important that we bring people from all over the region, and that is already happening effectively at Sulphur Creek Nature Center. But of course, there's uh, potential to expand upon this and um, again to reach more, more broader populations. Um, and lastly, to build partnership, building partnerships with community organizations. But again, Sulphur Creek Nature Center is already doing a great job at. So, so it's a, we have the potentially very competitive and really appreciate your participation in helping that process. As far as the timeline, we are here tonight at the visioning section where we are going to be brainstorming and getting your ideas for what it is needed to make Sulphur Creek Nature Center a better place and what the future, what is the future that we are vision and like to see. Um, going forward, based on the input we receive both tonight and from the survey that is out right now, I think most of you probably participated in or at least are aware of the online survey, um, we are going to be developing alternative concepts that describe the potential future. We'll be then again coming back to you in May to solicit your input on, on those alternatives. And based on your input again, we'll be developing a draft plan. And you'll have the opportunity to comment on the draft plan when it's presented to the Board of Supervisors in June. And then by September, this plan is going to be finalized and we'll be also, PARD will also be submitting the grant application for Prop 68. So implementation and of the master plan will depend upon which funding sources are available at that time. Um, but the goal is to be implementing by, or by spring of 2025. Um, so again, I just want to emphasize some of the upcoming opportunities to participate. There is going to be a net, right, we're here right now at the visioning workshop. The next workshop is tentatively scheduled for May 22nd. If possible, we will meet in person. Um, and then again, the presentation to the board will be July 9th. I apologize, I think I said June earlier. There's also online surveys. There want, the current visioning survey is open until the end of this month. We have 171 responses to date, and we'd love to hear from more people. And then we'll have another survey where you can comment on the different concepts, and that will be in May. Um, of course, you can look, go to the website. Many of you have probably already seen the website, but for more information, please check out the website and feel free to scan the QR code as well. Great, and I'm going to pass it over to Sarah. We're going to now jump into the site and talk about what some of the um, issues and opportunities are. So from our initial poll, it sounds like a lot of you are familiar with the site and you've been there at least once. Um, we're very lucky uh, at Sulphur Creek Nature Center to have good public transportation. And if you don't have your own car, you can begin at Hayward BART Station and you can take the 95 line and that bus will drop you right at the entry drive to the Nature Center. So um, you can take advantage of that if you don't want to drive your car. This is a plan of the site and you are probably most familiar with these areas along the um, orange circulation path. But for people who haven't been there before, um, the main entrance to the site is at the top of the hill. And then there's an existing drive that comes down somewhat steeply that gives you access to two parking lots. And these parking lots uh, provide some parking uh, for people that are arriving by car. Uh, and then from the parking lots, you can proceed down the driveway and cross a vehicular bridge here. Or there's also a pedestrian walkway that allows you to come a different route and cross Sulphur Creek over a smaller, very charming, uh, rustic looking um, pedestrian bridge. Uh, this hillside around the parking area is quite open. 
and it has a, a lovely south facing meadow feel to it. Um, it's got quite a bit of slope on it, but um, it's very open and sunny. And then when you get down into the, uh, the nature center area itself, you're actually at the bottom of a secret little valley that's been formed by this creek. And uh, as you saw in the slides earlier, it gives the, um, the nature center a beautiful sheltered shaded quality, which is very uh, you know, comfortable for the animals and makes it a quiet refuge for the animals who make this place their home. As part of our visioning, um, we have been thinking about some of the issues and opportunities that the existing site has. Um, and some of these are things that are already funded. Um, as you saw earlier, there is some grant money that's already been committed through the outdoor education um, uh, fund. And those elements are shown on this plan in purple. So uh, we have already secured some funding for a new entry kiosk and wayfinding. Here at the entry, it's very difficult sometimes if you're going past in a car to see the sign. The sign for Sulphur Creek is right here. Um, and so one of our goals has been to make it easier to see this entry uh, and also think about improving access from the bus stop to the drive. Uh, and maybe make a continuous paved path there. Uh, there is some funding committed for developing a Creekside animal program in this area. Uh, there is some funding that's committed for improving some of the pathways that give you access to the existing aviaries uh, and also for renovation to the existing amphitheater and some work uh, developing more outdoor classroom spaces. Issues that you might wanna consider as we go into the breakout rooms and start brainstorming. Uh, I've already talked about the visibility and the access from the bus stop, which is difficult for some people. Um, access for people walking down into the park along this drive is also challenging sometimes. It's rather steep. Uh, the grades in the existing parking lot make it difficult for emergency vehicles to turn around. So that's something that could be upgraded. Um, we might want to add some additional parking. Uh, these lots are pretty full on the weekends uh, and it would be nice to have some ADA parking for folks that have uh, wheelchairs or other uh, needs from the parking lot. The area where the aviaries and the animal enclosures are uh, is really lovely right now because it's so quiet and calm. And protecting that quiet, uh, peaceful character is an important goal. So um, ideally we would have pedestrian access only beyond these two bridges. Um, and the existing museum building which started out as a private residence uh, is somewhat dated and it's a little too small for the programs that are popular there. Uh, and so um, possibly expanding or augmenting those spaces would be a priority. Uh, the aviaries are somewhat worn and they need upgrading for the uh, health of the animals. Uh, yeah, and I think that does it for the issues. There are some wonderful opportunities here and again, you know, we really want to hear from you. So I'm only going to point out a few of these uh, in this part of the presentation. But this meadow area on the hillside is really quite lovely and sunny and open. And um, maybe there are some activities that could be developed on that hillside. Uh, we also think that there may be the potential to improve the arrival experience from the parking lot down into the nature center. Um, and that pedestrian bridge could definitely be made um, a little bit wider and safer. There is an area in this part of the park that uh, could also be developed into some new use area, maybe education, maybe camping, maybe picnicking, 
Um, but these are all areas that we invite you to think about and brainstorm with us about uh, as we move into the next portion of the presentation. Some of the potential new features that we've thought of, um, but again, you know, I don't want you to feel limited by these ideas. These are just some of the things that we've come up with, but uh, there could be a low ropes challenge course used for programming with youth groups or school groups. Um, a farm to feed garden might be uh, an activity that many younger visitors would enjoy participating in where food could be grown and then given directly to the animals or used uh, in culinary ways. Um, outside the museum visitor center, we already have the beginnings of a native garden, but that could easily be expanded and turned into some kind of demonstration garden. Maybe plants that attract butterflies or hummingbirds or other kinds of pollinators. Um, and then that turns into a delightful thing to look at, but also an educational resource. Um, overnight group camping is something that uh, people have expressed an interest in in the past. Uh, in that same area, uh, it might be possible to develop an area that could be reserved for picnicking or you know, small scale birthday parties or other types of events. And then finally, we are definitely looking at the opportunities to develop trail amenities because that will make our grant application more attractive. It's one of the goals of the Prop 68 grant that we're going after. So um, with the caveat that we would like to keep bicycles and other noisy things out of the animal enclosure area, we would love to hear your ideas about uh, trail development that might work. Um, at this point, I think we'll take some questions and Haiping was going to uh, manage this next section. So I'm going to pass it over to her. Uh, hi, everyone. At this point, I only saw uh, one question from everyone, but we can open up. If you guys have more questions, you can feel free to send to the chat room. And uh, before we start our question, um, our general manager, Jim Wheeler, is here uh, joining us. So I would like to um, ask him to uh, say something with us. And Spence, could you unmute? Uh, I'm Jim unmuted. Here? Yes. Hi, Jim. It's going to be hard to talk to one. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Jim Wheeler. I'm the uh, general manager for the Recreation and Park District. And I do have to say that this is probably one of the most exciting things that um, I've sat and watched and waited for in my in my two and a half or so years I've been here. I was the Recreation and Arts Direct Community Services Director for a couple of years prior to the position I'm in now. And um, I think that the most exciting thing is about the Nature Center is number one, just the passion from our customers, our staff, our volunteers. Everybody's very committed to this really unique, wonderful resource that we have in Hayward and really a region more of a more regional nature, people coming from all over that know about uh, the Nature Center and the Animal Hospital and all the great things they do. Um, the, the list of things they were showing you was, was just brainstorming, but by no means has anything for this site been decided or set the process. Uh, at heart, we truly believe in community process. Uh, for me, it's very, very, very important that the community's heard and that we use our resources uh, to maintain your trust and build what you want. So uh, this is a great opportunity for you to just brainstorm. Nothing's too crazy. Nothing's not considered. If you don't feel heard, get online, take the surveys all your feedback, I, my, my promise to you is that your feedback will be heard. We'll go try to get more money from grants. If we can't, we'll figure out a way to keep moving this forward. Uh, you know, there's capital projects and prioritizations happen all the time. So we understand that um, everybody from the Nature Center really helped well, with Measure F1 a lot, like so many of our participants from everywhere, from art studios to theaters, to, to kids programs, to sports leagues. Um, it was a community-wide effort to pass this bond. We want to use our money responsibly, but more so, I just want to tell you, 
thank you so much for your time and for coming out tonight and being part of this and caring about the center and um you know they're gonna take all your feedback they're gonna come back with some ideas and toss those around this is a a long project. We're so happy to have our partners from PlaceWorks here with us, and uh, we look forward to a great experience. So, unfortunately, I'm supposed to be in four different Zooms this evening that I want to listen to. So, I'm going to leave you with my very competent capital staff and my Nature Center staff and everybody else. And I, I see Director Peter Rosen's on the call. So, you have a lot of good eyes and ears on the ground. And I just wanted to tell you thank you if you volunteered there, if you've helped, if you've cared. Um, Thank you, Matthew Turner. Yeah, it'd be fun to add ropes course and camping. I, I, I hate to say it, those were small group camping, like 10 kids who've never slept outdoors, right? Um, and small ropes and challenge for team building and, and people to find their inner skills and confidence. But there's a couple ideas. The, the pallet's wide open, and this is probably the most fun we get to have because we get to dream big. So dream big and have fun. And thank you all so much for uh, being here tonight. Thank you, Jim. Okay, so here um, we received several questions from our participant. And um, the first group of question was about um, when will the recording be available? And it will be available within a week and we will post on the Silver Creek Nature Center Master Plan website. And uh, uh, there are a couple of questions related to um, the trail we mentioned about. Um, people are asking, will the tr trail go beyond the property or within the property? And there's also a question about um, saying, like wish it will be nice to expand the access uh, to the trail along the creek. Um, so I think it's all, I mean, we are open to all the suggestions. Uh, in reality, if we keep the trail within the property, it's more manageable. So it's more technical issue. If it's beyond the property, then uh, we will need to negotiate with a lot of, um, you know, different property owner. So that's, that's going to be a long term, but it's not impossible. Um, so we just, we are open at this moment and we'll hear from you about your suggestion and your wish. And uh, I am uh, looking at, give me a second, let me catch up with my chat. So, so okay. Oh, okay, great. So I'm able to copy. Okay, all right. Okay, so um, we also, we there's also a question about whether um, the current type of wildlife species will be expanded or be kept the same. Um, and also, are there plans to expand Expand the hospital. I have to say I have not heard idea to expand the hospital, but uh, in terms of wildlife species, I'm going to ask Wendy, could you answer this question? Um, you know, wildlife, the species that we have here um, are those that can't be released back into the wild. And so our acquisition of, of new residents um, is deemed on whether they can be released or not. And if they can't be, um, or if other centers have species that can't be released, um, we can acquire those, but we are limited in caging. If new caging is um, procured and set up, then the addition of new species could be added. But we are constantly changing our species too because of, um, you know, through through natural deaths or, um, you know, if something happens to them, um, that's when when we would be seeking out new species. So the the amount of species that we have would be changing, and it would be determined on the amount of caging and space that we have. 
we're always looking for something different and new. Um, but, you know, right now we're, we're um, just taking care of what we have. And as the park grows, that's, that's definitely a possibility where we could expand maybe. Thank you, Wendy. So uh, we should move to the small group, but uh, there are still a couple of questions we have not answered yet, but we're going to answer uh, the other half of the question at the end of a uh, breakout discussion. Uh, okay, well, um, we will now be going into some small breakout rooms. And what that's going to mean is that you're going to be sorted into a smaller group of people with a facilitator. And um, we're going to ask you a few simple questions. And our goal is really to um, gather as much information and good ideas from you as possible in these groups. Uh, so um, you don't have to do anything. In just a moment, you'll be sorted into a room and then we'll have a discussion and then we will bring you back to the main room in about 25 minutes. Uh, if, you, um, if you want, yes, yeah, so Isidra put a note in the chat. If you would like to have um, Spanish interpretation, uh, we will keep you in the main room. If you end up in a small group and you would prefer to have Spanish interpretation, let your facilitator know and we will get you back into the main room um, or send a message to Spence. He's managing all of these breakout rooms. Cedra, do you want to say that in Spanish? It's in the chat, I think. Um, okay, uh, I could. <laughs> I think I think we'll just sort it when we get to the rooms. So. Um, Spence, why don't you go ahead and uh, send us all to our breakout rooms and we will begin. Thank you, Paul. I see Paul has interpreted. Um, and we'll begin that. And of course, I forgot to ask somebody to uh, take notes and report for my group. <laughs> but um, let's go through um, the breakout rooms in order. Uh, who had group number one? I had group number one, and I think Leah is going to share share some thoughts from our group. Uh, Leah, are you ready? I think you're on mute, Leah. Are you ready to share? Uh, yes, sir. Are you able to share your notes? You know what? That might... I think in the interest of time, it would be better if you could just give like a two or three minute summary of the highlights. And, and I'll fill in what love. you mean. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. What stood um, out to you? Yeah. Um, I think that uh, we got some, everybody's love of Sulphur Creek stood out to me, um, but also um, we had some really interesting ideas about um, expanding trails connecting trails within parks, um, ideas about funding and more funding needing, including a flight cage for um, the rehabilitation uh, side of the park, which, and then um, we discussed uh, ideas for expanding the trails accessibility being very important and also, I know that I put in a lot of input about uh, needing more education space, both indoors and out. Um, and um, I think uh, some discussion also about fixing the enclosures, as well as signage that seems to be kind of uh, stuck in an era long past due. Um, was there more? I, I think you got everything really well. I think that, yeah, there's really emphasis on need for improvements and of the things that were beloved, which include the education program and facilities. One other thing um, that stood out besides the trails was to talk about the isolated feeling and that that was an important thing to, to retain. To maintain that, yeah. Great, thank you guys. So I think I had group number two. <laughs> 
Um, I'll just go ahead and go next. And um, we had a few uh, folks. I don't know if Joan is still here. Feel free to jump in if you'd like, but I forgot to ask you to be ready to summarize the group discussion. Um, so um, folks love it the way it is and they would love to see improvements to the animal enclosures and access for volunteers, um, access for visitors who might be in heavy wheelchairs uh, after rainstorms, they get bogged down in the gravel roads and it's an unpleasant experience. And the last thing that people want is to have a visitor feel unwelcome or unhappy at the nature center. Um, we also talked a lot about uh, things that could be added or development, uh, added or developed and there was quite a bit of excitement about um, maybe doing some coordination with the Oakland Zoo or with um, programs at San Leandro High School. I hope I'm getting all of this right. Uh, San Lorenzo. Might, thank you, San Lorenzo. Um, that might include native planting, uh, native plants as foods, maybe some activities, uh, planting for animal fodder. Did I did I miss anything, Joan? I see you're still oh, there. I think I think real expansion of the educational center and upgrading of the educational center for programming is really critical. Um, it, it's just so outdated. It, it needs to be expanded and, and updated. So that's kind of top of my list. <laughs> so Great. Thank you. Um, so I, that's our short summary. We recorded everything. Who was in group three? Um, that was my group and uh, Cher is going to start us off and then if there's anything else I can fill in and, and fill in any gaps. Yeah, we talked about the, the hospital being expanded as well as classroom space, um, new updated signage, uh, accessibility, especially more handicapped spots, uh, a way to connect San Felipe and Silver Creek Nature Center, even if it's just by signage. Um, just because of the foot traffic at San Felipe. Um, at more advertisement just to visitors and, and the volunteer program, maybe through social media, um, na nature cultural programming, and fix the enclosures to be more modern and rust proof. <laughs> so that, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Great. And then, um, Marvin, did you have the fourth group? Hold on, you're, you're muted again. Okay, hi. <laughs> yes, uh, we were in the main room and um, Samantha Connor um, volunteered to provide a summary. Um, and I'll, I'll fill in the blanks, uh, Samantha, if you'd like to just go ahead. Okay. Um, the things that people, you know, we said we really liked were the community aspects, um, the space for teens to spend time outdoors, which is lacking um, a lot of the time, and our volunteer opportunities. Um, the things that people said that they really felt like Sulphur Creek could improve on were some of the things that the other groups had as well. Flight cage was a very big one. Um, the lawn coming back and being grassy again. <laughs> uh, updates to the museum, especially the education space. Um, and again, kind of echoing what the other groups have said, um, just general updating. It's very out of date, very closed off, um, does not have space for a full class in it. Um, and the trail connections to other parks was something that people said they'd be really interested in seeing as well as more of a fundraising effort to get um, those upgrades um, and for things like um, our caging to be improved upon. Um, you know, again, Sulphur Creek is amazing, but it's very outdated. It hasn't been up improved in a long time and it is a little bit falling apart. Um, there were also some people who said that the kind of their vision for Sulphur Creek, the things they'd really like to see um, more programs on uh, Native American uh, including the plantings, um, especially focusing on like the kind of fourth grade uh, aspects, um, more reptile rally type events. So more kind of special events as well as more uh, volunteer opportunities. I think was mostly what we had in our group. Great job, Samantha. She, she, she really did cover, cover it all. Great. Um, Fantastic. Thanks so much for sharing all those comments and thoughts and insights. 
we have one more quick little poll uh, to close out the evening. And then we will be uh, finishing up and just reviewing the next steps and ways you can continue to participate in this process. Uh, but for now, Spence, why don't you go ahead and put up the final poll? And we'll just take a few minutes here. Amenities you see in this poll, it's similar to um, the online survey if you took the online survey. And these are all things that um, are not already, there's not already committed funds to the outdoor environmental education grant. These are additional things. It's not letting me submit. I've clicked two and it won't take them. You have to scroll down a little bit more and then and when you answer to the next question, it'll let you submit. Oh, there's another one, okay. Nope, won't let me. Uh. I'm sorry about that, Gail. Do you want to put your... Um... No, I'm getting it. I'm figuring it out. All right. <laughs> Otherwise, if you put it in the chat, we'll record it that way. Okay. Got it. All right. We've got 22 out of 28. Just another second or two. There's no mention of the Native American programs, which was uh, discussed at least two different groups. Yeah, that's right. And you know, we we had to guess at some of these ahead of time. So in the next public meeting, um, all of the new ideas that you have contributed will be folded into the options. Great. So I apologize for that. I think it's a fantastic idea. Okay. But we weren't able to get it into this poll. I understand. The online survey does have a, a, have a place where you can enter other ideas. And this is, we just thought this would be fun to end on. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close it, I think. And let's see what, um, what we got. So um, people are most excited about the demonstration garden. And that's what I heard in my small group also with overnight group camping being a close second. Um, farm to feed garden with 42%, also quite preferred. Uh, and then um, the multi-use trail has some excitement too. So that's interesting to hear. Um, a little bit less interest in this group about the ropes course or the group picnic area uh, or some of the I, I, other is not really <laughs> very clear. Maybe there's um, some of these other amenities that we're talking about, like the, the native plants garden would fall under that category. And then on the second question, improvements that people would most like to see, we have, wow, 77% uh, improved wildlife habitats and exhibits. And it really just goes to show how that experience of interacting with wildlife in a close personal way is so crucial to Sulphur Creek's mission and what people love about it. Um, also some interest in the trail improvements, improved outdoor classroom space, and um, a little less interest in museum space or picnic areas, again, um, engaging bilingual signage, uh, the least interest in that. And you know maybe that has to do with the fact that you have so many amazing volunteers and the signage is not as critical a component when you have people there to interact with visitors. Um, so that's great. Thank you so much for uh, submitting your ideas. If there were things that you wanted to see that weren't in this poll, go ahead and put them in the chat. And I see that um, improving stairs, continuing the animal lending library, that's an interesting idea. Um, improving access uh, for wheelchairs, um, 
improving access on that hillside if you were going to do anything there. So um, that's great. This will all be folded into our, uh, our thinking for uh, the next phase of the project. And then um, I actually forget, I guess, I guess I was going to talk about this. We're just gonna review one more time uh, the process and how it's gonna work. And today we had uh, a visioning workshop and you know, we knew we were gonna enjoy this workshop and I hope you have enjoyed uh, participating in it as well. We would love to have you join us again in May to give us feedback on some of the concepts that we come up with based on what we heard from you today. Uh, the next meeting after that will be the draft plan in June. And then we will be putting together a final plan that will go into our grant application. And remember the, the, the purpose of, of this round of meetings is to try and get a grant application that really reflects what the community wants. So, um, so that is our goal. And if you have any questions about uh, things that we talked about tonight, um, you can um, participate in some of these other uh, things that are ongoing. We still have a visioning survey. Uh, we will be offering up a survey when the alternative concepts are ready. Uh, the second workshop, we've talked about that. And then um, you're all invited to the hard board meeting draft plan presentation on July 19th. Um, Joan, are you, I see <laughs> a hand, um, but uh, I think at this point, I'm going to refer you with further thoughts, comments to Haiping, yes. who is the project manager uh, and her email address is here. Uh, if you right. want to scan this little code, you can go right to the visioning survey. It's, it's um, just a question about the timing. Oh, yes. go ahead. Why, why does it take from June 20, uh, 20, this year, 21st, to September 2024 to submit this? Oh, it's not for submit this. So for our grain cap application, we're going to submit this. Oh, I think that typo. Okay. No. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh. Thank you that's for catching that. It's extraordinarily long time. <laughs> that's right. It's actually, it's going to be September this year. We're going to oh, submit the grant you. application. Yeah. Makes a Thank lot you. more sense now. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Got it. thanks for clearing that up, Jim. I was, sure. I was wondering myself. <laughs> it was yeah, a little puzzling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you all for participating in our visioning workshop. And there are a lot of more questions we are not able to answer, but I'm going to organize that and uh, uh, put in our master plan website and let's organize um, the question and try to respond. If you have further questions, feel free to send me email and we'll address the best we can. Um, Thank you all, and uh, we really appreciate your time and effort, and please encourage uh, your friend and, uh, um, you know, family's neighbor to participate, to provide us input. Um, yeah, and hope to see you in our next workshop in person, and uh, maybe we'll bring out our resident animal to meet you all. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye.